Welcome to the Stories Told Podcast. This is episode 13, The One That Started It All. This is the Stories Told Podcast. Two authors talking about stories in movies, TV, and of course, books. I'm Michael Grayford. I write action adventure stories in fantasy and sci fi worlds, sometimes for younger readers and sometimes for adults. And I try to always inject at least a little bit of humor. And I am author E.W. Barnes, and I write action adventure time travel novels and space opera science fiction. Thousands of years, thousands of worlds. But be forewarned, beyond here, there will be spoilers. Are you ready for the adventure? Let's begin. So, good morning, Mike. It is May 4, 2023, which means it's... May the 4th be with you day. Star Wars day. So exciting. (laughs) So, you've been working hard on your current work in progress. Tell me how it's going. Uh, It's moving along. I, I like to break my stories out into sections in terms of the writing process. So I typically I'll outline things and that'll be one phase and then I'll do a rough draft and then an alpha draft and a beta draft and a final draft. (laughs) So it goes through all these different steps. Uh, And I have a few stories in different parts of those right now. One is nearing final. That's my first one called Zara. Remind me of the name of that one again. Yeah, it's, it's Zara and the golden scarab of Balihar. I love that. Yeah, Zara. or what it will be it, what it will be is the first book in the Tales of Zara series. And okay. then it'll just be called The Golden Scarab of Balihar. Right now it's on Kindle Vela. Um and I'm in final hopefully final editing phase for that. I hope to have that one out within a few months. And then now I'm writing the sequel to that and I'm also in the process of outlining the third book in that series. And how would you describe your Zara series? Um, the quick line I like to give is it's like Tomb Raider meets Aladdin. Tomb it's, Raider meets Aladdin. Cool. Yeah, it's a, it's a female main character uh, set in the Arabian Nights type universe uh, where the girl starts off as a servant in the palace and she wants to marry the prince. You know, she knows it's ridiculous, but it's like this dream she has. And then the prince gets put under a spell and falls in love with her. And she realizes maybe that wasn't the best thing. And so now they have to work together to try to undo that spell. That's exciting. Yeah, it's an, it's an action-adventure story. So it's, not, it's for young adults. Go ahead. Yeah, it's, for, it's for young adults. So it's nothing too deep. Um, and I try to keep it light and fun throughout. And this is available now for people to read on, on Kindle Vela, which yeah. is now yeah. on uh, episodic platform for people who like to read stories and episodes exactly yeah so you you can read it now uh it's fully complete up there i the last episode went up uh, sometime last month uh, so that story is complete i'll still be doing some more editing to it i i have the manuscript out to an editor now um so yeah there'll be some tweaks but the the story is basically there it's not going to change much cool Cool. Now, how about you? What, what is your status? What are you, what are you working on now? Well, um, I am working on the second um, book in a five book um, science fiction space opera series. And like you, the first book, it's called Apsis. The whole series is The Adventures of the Empyrean Guard, and it's space opera, galactic war kind of thing. Um, the first book is called Apsis, and it's available also on Kindle Vela. And the second book I'm working on right now is called Ecliptic. And so I am um, about um, five chapters into that. Um, and and it's also available on Patreon if people don't want to, you know, uh, read it episodically on, um, on Kindle Vela. Uh, the Apsis is available for someone to read right now all the way through on Patreon. And I'll put the link in the show notes below if anyone's interested in that. Um, So yeah, that's what I'm working on. I'm also working on, you know, I kind of sometimes jump around a little bit. I have like, I have a fantasy um, series that I work on. And so sometimes I, I'll work on that if I'm looking for a medieval environment instead of outer space. Yeah. 
<laughs> and I've always got the stories in my head and sometimes I'm plotting out other stuff. So yeah, I do that, I do that too. I have a science fiction sort of action thriller slash horror story. I just finished uh, the alpha draft for deep dark, isn't it? Yeah. 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 The yeah. deep dark. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Cool. I'm looking forward to when you finish that up. Yes. So am I <laughs> need to get it done. So- as writers and producers of stories, we also are consumers of stories, which is one of the reasons why we came together to put this podcast together to talk about the stuff that we enjoy consuming, the stories that we like to read and watch and think about. Have you come across any really great stories lately? I was trying to think of that earlier. Um, I've watched a lot of different things. I'm trying to th- I'm trying to like weed it out so it's like just great stories or things that I think, you know, are very satisfying. Yeah. Um and since since we're talking Star Wars, I mean the first thing that came to mind was the Andor series. Yes. Um that really stood out. Just incredible production, so well done throughout. Uh great job, good writing, good acting. All around I think that was a a nice entry into the Star Wars universe. I agree. And then, um, and maybe down the road, we can also talk about the third season of The Mandalorian, which I thought really elevated its game. Yes, we can definitely hit that. Um, and I'm trying to think of things that aren't Star Wars, <laughs> Since, but it's, you know, it's an all Star Wars day. There's a, a lot of things that I think are really, really good stories, but they're a little further back in time. Things like Dark, if you've ever seen that, uh, the Netflix show. Okay. T- time Travel. Did you see that one? No. Okay, that's... That's something we'll have to hit at some point. I'll have to make you watch that. <laughs> it's very good. Cool. But shows like that. But they're, you know, they, these are, you know, years old now at this point. Well, I have absolutely no problem going back and looking at things. And one of the things that I have learned from my offspring is with the internet, there is no old. Right. <laughs> he watches stuff that I used to watch as a kid. He listens to stuff that I used to watch as a kid because it's all in the now for him because it's available on the internet at any time. I love that these things are still around Me too. Uh, and that they're more accessible. You know, we're obviously going to talk to, about something today, um, which came out many, many years ago, <laughs> but <laughs> is available, easily available on one of the streaming services. Yep, exactly. So let's go ahead and jump into that. In honor of Star Wars Day, Mike and I decided to talk about Star Wars. <laughs> Seemed appropriate. <laughs> it did indeed. So um, I saw it in the theater in 1977. Yes, I, I, th- I did as well. I was very young at the time. I think I was six, something like that. Um, so I didn't I catch little- it. I don't think I caught it on like when it was initially out, but when it came out later in like the cheaper theaters they had back then Um, but I think it was still in 1977 so what did you think of it when you first watched it in 1977 oh man it's hard to describe I was so blown away I think just about everyone was who saw it I had uh, older siblings who saw it before I did so they were kind of hyping it up Um, which can go one of two ways right it's like it can make you more excited for it or when you finally see that thing, it could be a little bit of a letdown because it's been so hyped up. But it was definitely not a letdown for me. I was, yeah, I mean, I loved it from the opening seconds to the final seconds. <laughs> it was a, a huge like moment in, in the world of entertainment, I think. I mean, there were lines of people waiting to see this movie and to see it more than once. What was your take on it? Well, I actually was initially dubious okay. about it because I was a, a rabid science fiction fan, even as a young person. I cut my teeth on Star Trek. I, I was watching Star Trek by the time I was four. I'm a, I'm a few years older than you are, and I'll go ahead and fess up that I do remember the moon landing. <laughs> <laughs> And so I, I loved Star Trek and there was only three years of Star Trek. And then, you know, that was it. And you could watch, watch it over and over again in syndication, but there was very little else out there yeah. to watch science fiction, you know? And I, 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 I 
tried to watch and, you know, I, I would lap it up every time I found it. So there would be like Space 1999, which yep. only lasted like a season or a season or a half or something. And then there was the original Battlestar Galactica series, which I would, you know, try to, and Buck Rogers. I was always trying to, you know, watch as much as I can. But to be honest, some of it was, and I don't think this is a sacrilege to say this, really hokey. Yeah, for sure. And so I was very scared that this Star Wars movie was also full of hoke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, even even uh, the original run of Doctor Who, right? It's like, yes. I mean, I didn't see it when it was coming out, but I saw I saw it. Well, I probably saw some of it as it was coming out. Um, you no, know, and I loved it. I loved the show, and I loved the sort of science fictiony as aspect of things. But it was definitely super low budget, super hokey. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, and and you're right. A lot of it was Buck Rogers for sure. You know, yeah. the, it was a different era. <laughs> things were a little yeah, things were a little more really cartoony, funny. I think, in that in that way. The the era came to an end because of Star Wars, yeah. because of the quality that this and the, and to be honest, the love there was love for this movie, and it was clear in the way the movie was made. And yes, it still had some hope, but it was charming instead of cringing. Yes. Yeah, I yeah. think I think it's hard for people now, growing up now, to understand the impact that Star Wars had at the time. Yeah. The phenomenon that that movie was. It was, yeah. it was just so far beyond anything else that had come out at that point. And like you said, it's the not just the love of someone like George Lucas, right? Who had this concept and and oversaw its production and directed it and wrote it and all this, but the love of every person who was involved in this. You could tell they put their best work forward in every single department, yep. from ILM and the special effects, from Ben Burt and the sound design. John Williams with the music. I mean, like it goes across the whole spectrum. Everybody, the director, the, yeah. the sound people, the editors. I mean, I was just watching earlier how Star, Star Wars was saved in the edit. If you ever saw that. And no. it's, it's just, a, you should watch it after this. It's, okay. it's a short, like 18 minute sort of documentary thing on. And, uh, and where did you see it? Just as it's on YouTube. Okay, we'll throw the link into the comment section below for anybody else who wants to watch it too. Yeah. And it just goes, it's just like, it's after the movie was, you know, mostly done, you still had to have phenomenal editors come in and work with George Lucas to make it the movie that we saw. It was yeah. literally everybody who was involved in this just did their best work and it shows. And it was inspiring. It really was inspiring. I think your your point about how it just changed the landscape was enormous. I have people in my life who made life choices because of Star Wars. I've got a friend who is now a voice actor and went into the entertainment industry because of Star Wars. Yeah, I uh, think I'm one of those people. It had such a huge impact on me. That as I grew older, I, I wanted to be involved in something like that. I wanted to try to create the feeling that that movie gave to me and do that yeah. for other people. I, I started off in video games. Um, I also loved video games. And that was part of the reason. Like just being in entertainment, I think, was inspired by Star Wars. Yeah. I, I, same here. I started writing because of Star Wars. Really appalling Star Wars fan fiction. <laughs> but I started writing. Um, my, my mom still laughs today at saying that, you know, when I was 15, I would be up at midnight, one o'clock in the morning, just clattering away on, you know, an, a manual typewriter writing out my Star Wars fan fiction. Yeah, yeah. I remember one of the the sound designers that I hired for uh, the video game company I had. And I was interviewing, I was asking him about you know, why he was doing this, why he was interested in sound work, what he wanted to do. And he said the same thing. He said 
he wanted to be able to create something like Star Wars, like the the sound design of Star Wars, and how that was just so inspirational to him, and he wanted to be create be able to create unique th- unique things, unique sounds that stood out to people. And you know, this was in probably two thousand five, something like that. And he had just gotten out of school, so he was pretty young. So he wasn't of our generation. Um, and it's, so it's still inspiring people. And that extraordinary legs for a piece of entertainment like that. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. It's phenomenal. Um, Very. And it really spurred a revolution in science fiction because not long after Star Wars came out, they started producing all the Star Trek movies. Right. Which I was so excited about. <laughs> yes. And I had to, reluctantly at the time, and my young, youthful thing, admit it was because of Star Wars that I was getting Star Trek movies. <laughs> now I'm happy to admit it because I can, like, I love both and I'm cool with that. Yeah, I, me too. I love both as well. Um, yeah. yeah, and I'm, I'm, I'm super happy that Star Wars came along. Um, it's kind of like Lord of the Rings uh, for fantasy, right? It's like Lord of the Rings opened the world for fantasy. It's like now we get to see fantasy movies and TV shows uh, that are high yeah. budget and great. Whereas for yes. a long time, it was, you know, just little scraps <laughs> that you would get. Yeah. Uh, so, so things like that. I'm, I'm happy that we get uh, any kind of speculative fiction um, yeah. on the big screen that's really well done. It's great. And, and I should probably, you know, take a moment to add here. There were really great science fiction movies before Star Wars. I mean, 2001 is a brilliant movie, but it is so cerebral. It, it almost, you, you have to be in the right sort of mindset to run with that one. That's very different. Star Wars. Okay, so I've heard that Spielberg's Jaws sort of created the modern blockbuster, right? The summer blockbuster. I think, yeah, that makes sense. You know, it's like, cause it was this movie that came out and just blew people away. It was a huge success. Uh, and it kind of set a, a standard or, or a goal or model for people to follow. Yeah. Then Star Wars came and blew that out of the water. <laughs> it's like it, Completely. I mean, even as good as Jaws was, and, and as much as it did, Star Wars just revolutionized the blockbuster. It started a whole new thing. And I think while Star Wars was science fiction in a way, it was also a blend of things. It was science fiction. It was fantasy. It was samurai. It was Western. It took all these concepts, right, and all these tropes from these different types of stories and put them into one thing, made it fun it made it fast paced and you know that can be said for star trek too which was supposed to be wagon train to the stars star trek did that very similarly and i I think you you nailed it right on the head and star wars did it in a blockbuster way yeah i don't know there's uh, this i love talking about star wars because there's there was just so many things good about it and so many things that were done well at So let me ask you a question. Tell me if you can remember back to your six-year-old self with your huge saucer eyes sitting in the dark in the theater watching this extraordinary story play out in front of you in a highly crafted way. What are the top three things that you remember thinking and feeling from that day? Oh my gosh, that's a great question. I think I was... It was just so overwhelmed. I don't know. There's top three things. I mean, for I, I really related to the character of Luke Skywalker. It's just here's just this person, you know, normal guy on the planet. This young person who gets to go on this adventure. Right? It's the it's the classic knight's tale, but in a sort of sci-fi setting. Just just seeing that as a concept like opened my mind to like the possibilities of other things that could be out there. Um, the music blew me away. Darth Vader, just a, this menacing villain who has stood the test of time. And I think many people would say that's like one of the greatest villains ever, if not the greatest villain ever. Like you know, the presence of that guy just... I've heard argument that he is not the villain. 
And the villain is actually Palpatine, the Emperor, and that Darth Vader was simply like the sort of sub-level henchman. Right. And we never actually meet the villain in the first movie. It's definitely the case, right? In the first movie, if you look even even within the first movie, not knowing the Emperor, not seeing him, they don't I don't even know if they mention him um maybe once in the whole movie. They do, because in the scene where there's sort of the conference they're room talking, scene, yeah. there's a Solving the Senate. Right, right, yeah. yeah. But it's like, you know, it's kind of vague. Like, certainly as a kid, that would mean nothing to me. <laughs> but you, you see Vader as a villain. Looking back, back at it, you know, now, as, you know, certainly as an adult and analyzing the story, villain in the first movie is more just like the Empire itself. Yes. And, and Vader is the representative of that, right? Yeah. It's all dark and, and huge and evil. <laughs> Scary, scary guy. Yes. So that stood out to me. Um, I mean, Chewie, the 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 droids. It's just there was such monumental creativity in that movie, which I didn't appreciate it that way as a kid. But since and now, I look back and just all the loving attention to detail, from the set designs to all the creatures in Mos Eisley. To the all the, why are there all these weird droids? Like it, it makes no sense to have all these different droids, but it somehow it works in the story. Like why is R two D two beep when you have talking droids? It doesn't make any sense. But it's wonderful. They convey so much emotion with his little beeps and chirps. It just it blows my mind. Yeah. Yeah. The characters, like it, from a story perspective, since you know we're talking story, this was. You know, this was probably the first movie or first big story that was created from Joseph Campbell's template of the hero's journey, right? Like, it's yeah. famous for that. And it, it's still one of the best examples of that, I think. Maybe one of the purest, at least, from, from what Campbell created. And Lucas took that and he implemented it. He just did it so well. But I think... You cannot give Lucas all the credit for this movie because, like we we talked about earlier, so many people contributed so much. I don't think this movie would have been nearly as successful without John Williams' score. I don't think it would have been as successful without Ben Burtt's sound design for the TIE Fighters and the lightsabers and all all the different little aspects were so unique. And they they elevated it and made it just this mind-blowing spectacle. Iconic. Yes. Yeah. I think you, you needed all those things. And and the actors too. It's like Luke was Luke and, and Han was Han. And you can identify those characters so clearly. Like right? Luke is this this idealistic guy at the beginning, a bit naive, but he's brave and adventurous and open minded, willing to accept the force. And you see the journey that he goes on. Now people say he's whiny Luke, right? And he does, he's a little bit whiny, but that's only in the first act. After that, he thrives. He's excited, well, he's optimistic, and he's agentive. He goes from kind of doubting himself, allowing himself to be held down, finally trusting himself fully and destroying the Death Star with one shot by believing in himself and in the Force. You, you see that transition over the, the course of the movie, yeah. but it's not like blasting you in the face, right? It's all subtle in the background. It's, it's easy to look at Star Wars and just say, Oh, it's just a silly kids movie with space wizards, which I've heard many, many people use that. There's much more to it, right? There's there's there are subtle themes going on and put into the story in a way that I think works far better than other movies, which maybe have more sort of critical respect. To me, feel like they're smashing you over the head with their theme. I prefer when the theme is just subtle in the background to the story, generally. Yeah, and I think I think Star yeah. Wars does that very well. And you can look at the characters. You look at Han Solo. You can identify that guy. He's this lovable rogue character, right? This Wild West cowboy, scrappy, and he's willing to work around the law. Leah, Princess Leia, she's fierce and determined, and lawyer and honorable. I think Princess Leia was this amazing character for the time and for for decades. Right, you had this strong female character in this movie, which wasn't a super common thing. 
No, it wasn't as a matter. And that's actually one of the things that I, I resonated with so strongly as a, whatever I was 11 at the time. Um, because up to that point, female characters were generally there to be rescued right. and to support the story of the hero. And this character in the first 10 minutes shot stormtroopers with a laser gun. Yes. And stood up to Darth I Vader. About, I was all about that, about being just as strong and just as willing to defend myself as the guy was. And I absolutely loved that. I think I went as, as Leia for Halloween that year. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they, set her, they set the story up as like, Luke is the knight, right? The Jedi knight, or he becomes one. And he's going to rescue this princess. Like the, the core fantasy elements are there, but then he twists it. It's like, she's not just this yeah. helpless person sitting there waiting for someone to come rescue her. Even when Luke and goes... She may and, be rescued when they rescue her, but then she turns around and rescues them. <laughs> exactly. Like right off the bat, Luke comes in and she's like mocking him. Aren't you sure to be a stormtrooper? Yeah. She had this yeah. attitude. And, and, you know, Carrie Fisher played it so well. All these people played their parts so well. Yeah. Again, like we said, they they took what could have been considered to be hokey and schlocky and treated it with love and respect. Yes. Yeah. Very cool. So, is there anything that you might have changed in that movie? Yeah, that's that's a great question. It's it's hard to uh, critique a, a master work, right? It's like. <laughs> You change something, and it's like, well, would it have worked as well? Well, the, let me let me start with the with the easy one for me. The first the first things that I would do, I would undo the changes that George Lucas made in the nineteen nineties, having these uh, bad looking creatures walking around Mos Eisley, you know, for no real purpose, and to some extent for some goofy effects. Having Greedo shoot at Han was unnecessary, and it changes his character. Having the the Jabba scene where Han steps on his tail. Just silly, unnecessary. There's a reason that was cut in the, in the edit, because it's not necessary. It's, it's sort of redundant to what you already learn in the story. And I believe that Jabba scene in particular takes away from the impact when you see Return of the Jedi and you see what this Jabba character is like. Oh, we already saw yeah. him in Star Wars. Like when I remember when I first saw Return of the Jedi, I'm like, who is this thing? Like, what is this? It's weird. It's gone because you see him now. Anyway, so I would I would undo a lot of that stuff. Um, some of the visual effects improvements are fine, obviously. You know, improving the fidelity, that's great. So outside of that, just looking at the original story, at least from what I remember, what would I change? Um, I would I would shorten the first act um, because you don't even see Luke until like 15 minutes into the story, which is odd. Uh, that takes that long to get your protagonist in. Um, it's not necessarily a problem. But I think there's just too much time spent with the droids. I rewatched yeah. Star Wars recently, like yesterday, I think. <laughs> and the first 15 minutes of the movie, you would you you would think that the story was about C-3PO and R2-D2. It yes. starts off with them. Yeah. C-3PO has the first lines in the movie and most of the lines of dialogue in the early part of the movie. And you're following them from when the the uh, when they get launched in the capsule to the planet, and then they're walking along the planet, and then they get uh, you know captured by the Jawa. It's like you're going along with their. I'm like, okay, I guess this is a droid movie. <laughs> so I would I wouldn't remove that because I I still like the nostalgic me loves that. Um, it's fun, and I think there's a lot of good setup there. But I would shrink that. I don't think you need as much time with them um, walking around do, in the do desert. You think, do you think maybe that because now um, when you watch movies that are, have been made in the last, you know, five, 10 years, things move so much more quickly yeah. in the storylines. Do you think that you've been influenced by, by that tendency? Because in 1977, that was sort of how, that, that pacing was very typical for movies of that time. Yeah, this, yeah, exactly. And I think this is something that 
struggle with in in writing novels like what's the balance uh in the first act in particular of story setup versus throwing you into you know the the full conflict of the overall story um things tend to get into it more quickly now that is definitely true um and and for sure i'm influenced in that um in, in saying that but I still think I still think it could go a little more quickly. I remember at the time I didn't think that at all. I wasn't like, oh, I'm bored and falling asleep. I was right. totally immersed. And even now I still love every second of it. But I think for a more modern audience, you could trim that and not really lose anything. I don't think you would lose style or anything like that. Even if you just have them land on the planet, have them split apart, and then they get caught immediately a lot more quickly. You, know, you cut out a few yeah. minutes only. I think you would still have the same feel of the movie. That would be one thing I would change. Um, another thing might be to change the assault on the Death Star a little bit. I feel like there's a bit of repetition there where they go in, Vader comes, he shoots some guys, they go in again, Vader comes, he shoots some guys. <laughs> it's like three times by the time Luke gets there. I would probably have them do one more attempt to blow up the death star so that we see that it's very difficult when luke goes in to do it right now i think there's only yeah. two people one or two people maybe who try to shoot it first before luke gets there so i would add that i wouldn't want to drag it out too much because it's overall pretty well done the other thing i noticed <laughs> re-watching this again there's a, there's not a lot of uh grief when people die they don't really <laughs> linger. Like when Luke loses uh, his aunt and uncle, right? and it's like he sees them, you know, barbecued there, and then it has her whole planet destroyed, and she's mildly horrified for like half of a one scene, <laughs> and then yeah. Obi Wan feels the death of all these people, and it's like he just has to sit down for a minute, and he's fine. And then when Obi Wan dies, Luke's like, "Oh, he's sad for like a second. So they just kind of brush past. I mean, I know it's like it's a kids movie. You don't want to linger on <laughs> the horror of all these deaths. But it does seem a little weird. I feel like there could have been just a little bit more time or reaction or something. Also, that's also very typical of the time. Yeah, that's probably you know, true. There's a lot of attention paid to. You know, the psychological impact of trauma. <laughs> I guess that's probably true. It's like, okay, we're on to the next scene now. What about you? What would you change? Um, well, you know, it's funny. Uh, similarly, I would probably now, because again, I'm looking at it through a lens of how many decades have passed and how many, you know, it's almost like I'm I'm feeding back the influence that star wars had on all the following movies and then those movies feeding back on influencing star wars when i say these things so keep that in mind when i say this is what i might change because it's all influenced about what happened afterwards but um, i I would actually change whiny luke um that is actually and again that is that was also very typical for the time um in those days teenagers were shown to be very whiny rebellious um anti authority and i you just don't see that now so much yeah you know what i mean yeah, i think that, that's so, true to to just sort of i don't know kind of keep it more uh fresh and eternal i might take that element out because i think in a way that sort of does date it a bit yeah i think that's true um i know small thing <laughs> i think again this go, goes back going back to uh sort of writing like the writing craft and setting up that first act of your story you're generally trying to yeah. set you're trying to set like okay here's here's this person's ordinary life and here's what's wrong with it right because if there's nothing wrong with it then no reason for this character right. to go on any kind of journey so i i, th- I think that's Probably what was trying to be done there was like not happy in this situation, right? Which is fine, right? That's that's fine. Yeah. But it does it is a little dr- drawn out. Like everything, everything pretty yeah. much in that opening scene is oh, I got to do this. Oh, I got to do that. Oh, I wanted to go over here. You know, it's going to Toshi Base. Oh, Toshi Station. Yeah. <laughs> um, the 
other thing I might change is 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 and again these are small things. I mean, it's like talking about how do you change a Picasso yeah. or a Da Vinci. Right. I mean, <laughs> right? So I would might try to give some hint as to what Vader's motivation is. Yeah, okay, it's power and control of the empire, but so what? Yeah. And and that, again, that is very much influenced by the evolution of storytelling in the decades since Star Wars. Yeah. So, is it necessary? No. If I had a, you know, would I might want to do this? Maybe. Yeah. Those are the only things I can think of that I would change. Yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah. I, right. Looking at, at it, certainly v v villainy has, has evolved since then. Yeah. Our expectations yes. of, of characters, especially now, maybe in the last decade or two, I think more than even before that, want the villain to be relatable. Uh, we want to yeah. understand, like, okay, why is this person doing it? There's a reason for it, right? People aren't just, you know, mustache twirling villains looking to, to hurt people. Um, that is, that's newer. But you're right. Having, having a sense, whether it's Vader or the Empire itself, is like, what is their goal, right? They just destroyed a planet. Like, what is the motivation yeah, behind this? Sure. Just to squash the rebellion, yeah. to maintain an iron fist. I, I, I mean, I guess it, it still works mostly fine in the movie. I think, but you're I right. Agree. I could, that could be I, I think it, and I think it works more than mostly fine. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's good stuff. It's good stuff. So this almost seems superfluous to ask this question, but I'm going to go ahead and ask it anyway, because I, it's something that, you know, we're going to be doing in this podcast on a scale of one to 10. What'd you give this movie? Um, that's, you know, that's an interesting question. I have to look at it in terms of context, like over the years of my life, given that I would have to say for me, I would place it at a 10 because I think, just the impact, not only the impact it had on the world, obviously changed so many things, right? From summer blockbusters to how science fiction was done to how action movies were done to just the like stepping up your game, people, right? <laughs> like putting yeah. putting the money into to making something super duper high quality. Um, and the effect it had on me, you know, this Star Wars was my favorite movie for probably most of my life, right? Probably up till my, my 30s, maybe. Where I started saying, you know what? Having, favor having, having like a favorite of anything necessarily pushes other things below that. And uh, so I've kind of gotten away from favorites. I have like, oh, these are my top five favorite things in this style, right? Um, yeah. But I can't deny that Star Wars like was my favorite for so long and had such an impact on me. And even rewatching it now, it's still so good, despite you know the flaws and and the, the tweaks we may do we may do to it from a modern audience perspective. It's it's one of those movies like Casablanca or Citizen Kane, right? Where it's like you go back in time. It's like those movies are never going to be you know, seen as not great because yeah. they were, there were pivotal moments, right? They, they, they were these iconic things at that time. And Star Wars is definitely that. I mean, <laughs> look at it now. You've got how many more movies and TV shows and books and video games. Oh, yeah. The impact is phenomenal. To deny that, I think it would be silly. Um, and I certainly don't. I, so, sorry, very, very long-winded answer to, I would give it a 10. And I, I, I agree with you. I actually, um, I, I would say Star Wars was one of my favorite movies. Wrath of Khan, when oh, it came man. out. Yeah, might we have given it a too. yeah, we do. Um, but like you, as I matured, I realized that, you know, when people say, what's your favorite movie? I'd be like, pick a genre because, you know, there are so many great movies and all these different genres with that are great in their own right, such that I wouldn't be, want to just pinpoint one movie and say, that's it. So I'm with you. So on a scale of one to 10, I would have to give this a 10 with the um, assumption that there are a whole bunch of movies that get 10s. Yeah. I think I probably have less 10s than you do. <laughs> 
but there's yeah there's certainly there's certainly a lot across genres that i place way up there yeah yeah agreed agreed awesome okay i think that brings us to the end of our discussion of star wars today um anything else you want to say about the movie or closing remarks or um, some summary i don't know i mean i I, I know there are people out there who haven't seen it. That seems weird to me. <laughs> well, then we, we, we urge them to go watch yes. it. Yeah, even if, and it's okay. even if it's not your thing, right? Some people, it's just not their thing. I think it's kind of like uh, Harry Potter. I hadn't read or seen Harry Potter. And then in my writing group, my friends are like, you, you need to see this because it's something that will be discussed, right? It's like... It's known in the world. There'll be so many references to it all the time. And they were right. I'm glad I read it. I'm glad I saw the movies. Uh, I think Star Wars is the same, right? It's it's everywhere. And it's not going away. So I think just seeing where it started from, even if it's not your bag, will give you a sense of what people are talking about. Agreed. Agreed. Absolutely right. So we invite our listeners to join us next week when we're going to discuss the 80s. 80s? Yeah. Yeah, I think early 80s. Also, Lucas produced movie Willow. And then that will lead us into discussing the new Willow series on Disney+. Plus. Sounds good. So before we go, Mike, where can people find you? Uh, you can find me all over the place. My website is michaelgrayford.com. Uh, G-R-A-Y-F-O-R-D. I'm also on Facebook. I have a Facebook page there. It's the same name, Michael Grayford. Uh, Instagram is michael.grayford. TikTok is Michael Grayford. All over the place. <laughs> Search. And you've got a YouTube channel too. Yes, don't that's you? right. I have a YouTube channel as well. Also, Michael Grayford. Very simple. <laughs> Your YouTube shorts are hilarious. <laughs> uh, uh, anybody listening, we're going to put all these links in the show notes below. You need to check out Mike's to do shorts on his YouTube channel. They are hilarious. <laughs> At least someone else enjoys them. <laughs> where can we find? And I where encourage... can people find you? Yeah, they can find. I, I, I too am all over the place. I will drop the link to below, and I encourage people. Actually, I'm producing audiobooks of my stories available here on YouTube, um, so that people don't have to buy them and pay for them. They are digital voice narration, so there is a little bit of that art, artificial quality to them, but for a free audiobook, I think that's that's okay to kind of sacrifice that that uh, quality a little bit until the time comes that I can have a high-quality, delightful human person do these audiobooks. So I encourage people to check those out. Put, I will put the links in the show notes below. And if you enjoyed this, please um, feel free to hit that like button and subscribe and click the notifications bell so that you know when the next podcast comes out when we talk about Willow the movie. So thanks so much, Greg, Mike. This has been really great. I've enjoyed it. Thank you. And may the fourth be with you. May the fourth be with you too.